In the poems and reflections that follow, I take prayer to include a range of ways that poets and their readers enter into divine presence. But of course, prayer covers a wide range of practices that include not only words, read or spoken or remembered, recited in a pew or cried out by a deathbed, but also wordless meditation, body work that opens spiritual pathways, the small breath prayers and sudden remembrances that see us through busy days. In the course of those days, words from hymns and psalms and poems from which only fragments remain in our memories may cross our minds like little comets across the night sky. The Bible is a rich, essential, and sufficient resource for learning to pray, but it's not a rule book. It is a living word to a living people who are also meant to keep learning from one another in the midst of the long conversation between faith and culture. From those able to articulate current concerns deeply, we learn how to meet the urgencies of our own generation, how to translate, adapt, apply, and live into ancient texts, and how to find words like new wineskins for what the Spirit has done and is doing among us. The fourth century hymn, of the Father's love begotten, moves me to awe. Lines from a Berkeley poet wrestling with a life-changing diagnosis in the late 20th century do the same. Let me bless and cherish every moment to arm myself with consciousness that every earthly darkness has given way to light thus far. Another poet wrote, All love shepherds us. And in their various and beautiful ways, all those who love words shepherd us as well, directing us toward the Word who was in the beginning. I wrote this book in gratitude. The reflections I offer in the following chapters are my way of giving thanks, not only for the poems included, but for many others that have given me phrases, lines, and words that, like little seeds of the Spirit, have taken root and grown and nourished me, I am also grateful, having taught poetry courses over the past three decades, for the ways poets have awakened many who have had no inclination to pray, who find themselves doing something very like praying, as something in a turn of phrase turns their hearts in a new direction. Some of the poems I include here are from known poets, others from not so known, but each has something to teach us, I think, about how to pray. I have added one of my own poems, not because I think I belong among their ranks, but because I have found myself, on occasion, drawn to pray by means of poems. I hope that the prayers these poets wrote in quiet moments, reclaimed in the midst of their own messy lives, may serve contemporary readers in new ways. They redirect us to biblical stories, to images and language in ways that awaken fresh attention. They offer words for situations not unlike those we face separated though we are from some of them by several hundred years. All are poets from the Western tradition, though those of us who inhabit that tradition also have much to learn from the rich spirituality of Asia, Africa, India, and South America, and from tribal cultures everywhere. These poems represent only one lineage among many, but it is one to receive with due regard. The readings I share here are contemplative exercises, not scholarly analyses. As such, they are meant more as invitation than instruction. My hope is to share gifts I have received from poets who pray, or who reflect on prayer, confident that they have other gifts to deliver to readers who seek in them the spiritual companionship one pilgrim can offer another along the way.